listening to the House by the Video Store podcast. Welcome to the House by Video Store podcast. I'm your host, William, and joining me today will be Derek. Hello. And Sean. Hello, and this is going to be an all-political podcast, right? Yes. We decided to make a special we're episode. Talk, we're going to be going through the yes. new tax bill line <laughs> by line. But we're going to all act like Alex Jones while this is going on, <laughs> so it's going to be really crazy in about 10 minutes. Or in other news, we'll actually yeah, we're be discussing <laughs> the movie uh, Rare Exports, um, which is currently available. You can watch it on Amazon Prime if you have that. And I did that video review of that. Yeah, Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale. It's a 2010 film, and Sean did a video on it. Um, so you can watch that video. Yeah, the, that short video review has like no spoilers, but. Yeah. I mean, we'll just say in. I personally recommend it. We'll get into the movie later, but yeah, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. I recommend no spoilers because that's kind of the fun of this movie is, I don't know, like it has like lore behind it and like you see the lore as revealed in, in the film as a progressive. Like a fishing lore? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, not a lure. I do want to see yeah. the lure, though. That, like, mermaid musical. Yeah. I really want to see that. It needs to be about the real mermaids, because those are, like, terrifying. The <laughs> mermaids of mermaid. something County. So, mermaid. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we're discussing mermaid. Rare Exports. Um, what did I say the subtitle was? A Christmas Tale? A Christmas Tale. Yeah. And well, is this is, is this, I can't remember. Is it Finnish it's or fin- it is yeah. a Finnish yeah. film? So it's, it's in Finnish with some in English and there's subtitles. Oh no, you can't have that in America. People just get, Oh, you got to read. This ain't in English. Or wait a minute. This ain't in America. No, it's like, this is one of the watching things, not the reading things. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you can watch an Amazon prime and, and then two, just to kind of follow back up with the last podcast, so Derek, you were not on that when we when we discussed this, but we discussed the format of the show going forward. Oh yeah, I wasn't there. And based on the feedback we saw on YouTube, which we'd greatly appreciate everybody that gave us feedback because it mm-hmm. did help kind of shape our yeah. decision. Uh, I think we're gonna be doing going forward, at least for the near future is just kind of recording multiple episodes at once and cutting out the news discussion and just mostly talking about the movie in question and then other things we would recommend you check out that we've been watching. And then we may do like one-off YouTube videos about news or about, you know, like a Netflix series or, you know, something that comes out that's in between the episodes. We may just do one-off videos on that at some point. But I think for now we'll do is... Um, record episodes a few at a time and then that way you'll still see episodes coming out weekly and we'll cut out some of the news and try to get the run time on the individual episodes down a little bit shorter uh, and a little bit more focus on the movies we're discussing so we'll do that for a little while see how that works out um, like I said you know really really appreciate everybody that had any feedback because mm-hmm. that yeah. just kind of helped solidified our thoughts kind of yeah. on what direction that we were thinking to go with this anyway. Man, and yeah. for me, it's going to work out because if you've been listening to podcasts, obviously, a lot lately, like I haven't been on them. And I've just been where my job is at. We're just doing overtime like crazy. So it's really difficult for me to he do. He works like, for Santa. Yeah. I work for, <laughs> it's just like we're just every Saturday, Monday, you know, I'm doing like 70 hours a week. So. It just works out a lot better for me. That way, I can do it. You know, and maybe if we week. ever, if we ever get, um, if we want to challenge ourselves, maybe we we'll record like five episodes a time or something. No, fifteen then. minute episodes. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this movie is good. We're talking about episode one of <laughs> Frasier. <laughs> God. Speaking of that, yeah. you know, Roseanne's coming back. Is that Netflix? Or no, it's like CBS. Okay, is it, okay. Is it, is it limited? Me. Is it a limited series? Like, are they talking about just one season? I think it's going to be kind of like the Will and Grace thing. I feel like once, I don't know, but I feel yeah. like if they put it out there and everybody responds to it really well, I, then they'll probably. I, the reason I bring it up is because I wondered if there's going to be, a, you would think there would almost, if it was Netflix, I would have thought it for sure, but is there going to be a Halloween episode since those are like I think big fans? Yeah, those are big yeah. fan favorites. Like, are we going to get another but Halloween episode? Let's just be honest, though. You, as much as like 90 shows could be good or bad. I don't think you can ever get back to like the 80s and 90s good Halloween episodes because like even shows today just I think they kind of fell at it. You know, you look, even as much as like what's a home improvement still had like decent Halloween episodes mm-hmm. and regards oh, 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 I, regards how you feel about Tim Allen. I mean, like, yeah, I'm trying to think of what, but I don't really watch sitcom I, I shows I like that either. anymore. So I don't yeah. know. So, I mean, I'm sure like the middle has probably had some good ones. Yeah. I don't know. People like the middle and the Goldbergs. 
Yeah, Those do like gimmicky okay. episodes, yeah. you know? Yeah, like some shows like The Office would usually have like a Halloween episode or yeah. have at least been the cold open of an episode. But yeah. like it did feel like in the 90s, you did have the Halloween focused episodes yeah. where it's like, all about that. And I feel like it was like Alice Cooper directing it because people always <laughs> get their heads cut off. And there's like, <laughs> like remember like the Family Matters? Ep- there's always like weird stuff that they yeah. do in Halloween that was like really cool. Whereas I feel like nowadays they, they don't do that because yeah. like... Just imagine Big Bang of Halloween's like, mm, give me some candy. Like, nobody wants to watch that. It's like, oh, we're dressed as the Justice League. Nah. I think it was, I don't know if it was like FXX or what, but they were doing the Treehouse of Horror Marathon for, it seemed like multiple yeah, it was days. FX, FX, yeah, FX. I watched some of that. Yeah, yeah, see, that's yeah. the stuff I'm talking about. It's yeah. like, that, that's stuff that's kind of cool. You don't, like, The Simpsons is really known for that because mm-hmm. that's going to go on for the next 100 years because that show is just never. Like, ending. they'll just, um, what they'll do in the future is The Simpsons, it'll still be the same voice actors, but they'll just take every, like, syllable and word they've spoken from in the past how yeah, many well, seasons they'll, of the show and, yeah they'll do like those uh like ai voc- vocalizers yeah. like those japanese pop stars that were it's not a person it's not based on a real voice but they like made voices for it like hatsune miku <laughs> yeah. or whatever you know that'll be it they'll just yeah. vocalize i just don't know if you, at this point i just don't even know if you could like cancel the simpsons because it's been going on since like what 89 so yeah it's like yeah just keep it going i mean if if matt groening gets accused of sexual assault then, <laughs> then yeah well at this rate there's gonna be like three guys in hollywood lives, yeah so. yeah which is really funny because i always forget that conan was a writer on it and mm-hmm. the rest of the development always references the guy from redheaded guy from harvard Oh coming. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's um, so offhand discussion. Speaking so, speaking of yeah. Roseanne and Netflix and TV, I watched um, the rest of Mine Hunter, and that's going to get a season two, right? They just announced yes, that. They announced that's coming out for season that. two. Um, it's a David Fincher kind of uh, time period crime series about the beginning of the FBI's like criminal profiling um, program. Yeah, that that aspect is very interesting. That and and it, and it touches on real serial killers, and it kind of sprinkles them in between some other stuff. The like uh, you respond to somebody in our Facebook comments about the, the typical procedural elements. Yeah, and yeah, those elements are the ones that feel the most almost stale. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you almost just like, all right, well, I've seen this show a thousand times, you know, and that those elements are sprinkled in a little bit. Yeah, thankfully they're not. It's not like episode by episode. I was afraid it yeah. was going to be that at a certain point. Yeah. So like what you're referencing was somebody asked like was the or if the show is worth watching, and then I had mentioned like on our Facebook page through the House by Video Store, and I had just said something to the effect of it still has some of your standard criminal procedural beats that you see in all those shows. But they also have a lot more going on with some of the serial killers in the show being based on real people and, you know, having more. Inter- and it's a time period. It's like set in like what the 70s. Mm-hmm. So it's just an interesting mishmash of stuff. So even though there are some very um, well-worn tropes that are used throughout, like the boss is like, oh, you can't do this, but you succeeded. So, yeah. OK, so there's like a lot of really well-worn tropes, but it's all just kind of set dressing kind of around these other more interesting things that get more of the focus. Yeah. There are some tropes, though, that are very perfect. Like on BoJack, they kind of point at the grizzled cop that's like really good at his job. And it's yeah. like the most worn trope ever. And it's like, oh, I kind of like those. There, it's an interesting angle almost because the, the younger cop in this one is almost, he's almost obsessed. Not quite, but you you get the idea that he's almost obsessive, or he starts to become obsessive with learning how uh, the serial killers work, you know, yeah. and getting in their minds. And that's what's kind of interesting. And the older cop in this one, he's almost like more there, kind of doing his job and trying to, you know, basically just serve his yeah, role put as his he's day hired. Work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like he he's trying to do the best thing he can do, and he's dedicated for sure. But the other guy like goes to further lengths. Um, yeah. But he's younger too, so you could see like his character really. As seasons go on, maybe like really changing yeah. possibly. That's something to check out because I love like because most of the stuff I I watch or listen to is like true crime stuff. Yeah, so I, I have to check. Yeah, recommend. It out. And two, it almost feels like a prequel to something like the Michael Mann movie Manhunter, um, or Red Dragon. Or if you mm-hmm. read the book Red Dragon about like the character of like Will Graham from like the Hannibal Lecter series, so it almost feels like a prequel to that. Um, because like the timeline of like that show, like if it's set like in the Mm seventies and the Manhunter stuff was in the eighties, then like it almost does feel like it's a prequel in like the Silence of the Lambs and all these other things are sequels, really. Like they could be built on the like those feel like it could be in the universe. Like, well yeah, yeah. just because it is FBI and it's built on the backs of that. I think they said season two might be like possibly seventy eight, seventy nine, like eighty, eighty one. And I guess with some Atlanta serial killer. 
you know, yeah. and that's kind of where that and then was they think the, uh, maybe BTK killer, maybe yeah, because in Atlanta, I, I could be wrong, but that was around the time that like uh, you had all the African American children getting murdered. Yes, and, yeah, they think yeah. it might center around that possibly. Which that they said it'll change kind of the music yeah. of the show and stuff. So Have that sounds ever, that's a really interesting case. That was one of the first times they had the super cops and they did the profiling. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know about that case, I, I can't think of what it was called, but it was in Atlanta. It was all general, I think African American. Mm-hmm. Like the only thing you need to know about. Um, mind hunter season one is it's a show about serial killers and at some point they do have the song psycho killer <laughs> that plays <laughs> yeah, over something pretty early. as long as you're okay with that then you'll like there's like some kitschy elements but overall i really enjoyed it and i was super excited to see that they announced another season so was yeah. owen wilson in it no. wow actually wow. you know there wasn't wow. a lot of a lot of people that was like no felt like stunt casting no. or anything like that which is kind of cool because it feels uh you know it makes it feel a little bit more authentic. well the guy they got is the um the first killer they interviewed like was amazing and yes. he apparently got he's gotten some other gigs after yes. that, that was he, kinda, like his breakthrough he is the most i don't know it's like it's hard to take your eyes off him yeah it's he's very good and i'm glad he wasn't just in one episode like a lot of uh the people they profile you know yeah. question is this better than law and order svu Nope. Bum, okay. Bum. <laughs> so no, I, I mean, I, just, I mean, how many episodes of that versus oh this? Like, God, if yeah. you want to talk about, uh, you know, <laughs> if you pick out the best episodes of that against this, there's only what ten episodes well, of Mindhunter. This, like, and, and Mindhunter, I feel like the middle. There was a parts in the middle that maybe drug a little bit for me, and it maybe because of the procedural stuff. I don't know because I did drop off for a second. Then I watched, you know, I watched Godless. You weren't on the last podcast. I absolutely recommend that. Highly recommend that. Loved it. Thought it was phenomenal. I, I binge that, and I don't really binge shows at all. Yeah, we watched all that in one weekend, um, and then cleared up a couple things, and then got back to Mine Hunter. So I liked it quite a bit, but it wasn't like it, it you still get distracted. My, yeah, it didn't yeah. like rock my world or anything. But I'm definitely in on season two, and I'll I'll start that as soon as it, as soon as it starts. And then I watched one episode of Dark, which is the I'm already f- forgetting the German. I think it's a German um, kind of. I think it's been listed as supernatural. I'm not for sure, but it's. I think definitely. Oh, it's like the mystery. German Stranger Things. That's what people are saying. Yeah, slash like Twin man. Peaks. Yeah. Um, Netflix too. Yeah, yeah, Netflix. I've only watched the first episode, and I really want to watch more. I just, you know, we had these two movies to watch because we're doing back back to back podcasts yeah. this week. Um, so I wanted to say more about it, but uh, I really, really liked what I saw. It didn't <clears throat> have like strong hooks as far as. As the end of it didn't like, there wasn't like this giant cliffhanger, but it was enough happening to where I'm like really intrigued now. Um, and the look of the show is phenomenal. Like it looks stellar. I, you know, visually it just, Stranger Things, <clears throat> they kind of made that look like a more of an 80s Amblin yeah. film, which that looks great too. This feels like a more modern looking show. Yeah. And just, I don't know, it's just, it just looks phenomenal. But also too, when you start watching it, it has um, English dub turned on automatically. Uh So it makes Uh it seem way cheesier. So you can (laughs) go turn that off on Netflix and turn on the original language. We had to go back and forth because of, you know, our baby. She'd be good. (laughs) And then all of a sudden she'd like, get hungry or fussy we're like okay we we got to turn on the english language again because we're like dealing with her so we can pay attention but uh, i definitely recommend turning on the original german uh language just because the acting is is good and that kind of mm-hmm. deflates some of the all uh, one is it i know it's german and it's another dude jackie chan but i want jackie chan to do the dubbed american voices <laughs> <laughs> Uncle. that's what it feels like it felt like i was watching an anime yeah you know what i mean like where it just they i don't know just something about it just Man. did not it, it was it, there's some even we when, tried it for a minute just because yeah. it was going to be easier you know yeah dubbed it is hard to watch this dubbed especially because like you can go back and watch films that were the the ones that mess you up the most are like some of the original and this is me going on a tangent real quick or we're getting way off course but there's a couple of early jackie chain movies that he he did it in mm-hmm. english but they went back and dubbed it in chinese and then redubbed it into uh, English mm. with other actors. Yeah, and it's yeah. so hard to watch because it's like yeah. it's completely out of sync. And well, because like some of his dialogue is fine, and then like well, it's not even his voice. This is his like early oh. work. So it'd be yeah, like I've, I've some American seen, dude yeah. or some English dude doing Jack. And it's like what? Oh, okay, and yeah. He did it originally in in English with but then, his own voice. But then you'd have it. like the the American characters that are obviously speaking English based on their mouths, and it doesn't match. Yeah. Like what the hell? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's so hard. It like mess. It 
kind of gives me a headache sometimes because it like it's uh, it's so off and weird and yeah. It but just I do put you in this it. surreal Jackie Chan universe. Yeah. It's like this off, slightly off universe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's it's a bad place to be. Yeah. The movies are fun, but the so then you know I also watched a couple other movies and we'll talk about those next podcast, which was Lucky Logan and um. I can't remember, but you'll have to wait till the next podcast to find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I guess I'll save mine for the next podcast too, because yeah. it's just the Punisher. Like if you're in on that show already, you're probably watching it. If you weren't into any of those Netflix series to begin with, I don't know that that one is one that would inspire you to jump in and watch it. Although it, it is one where you really don't have to have seen the other ones really yeah. to jump into it. Um, and real quick too, I guess I didn't give a synopsis of what that show's about. Basically, oh, the Punisher. Or this show? No, <laughs> um, the uh, dark. It kills it, it's like a small, I guess, German town, and um, somebody apparently went missing like years ago. Um, and actually, the tagline William on Netflix at the end of it it says it's happening again, <laughs> which is the new Twin Peaks: The Return. Tw- yeah. uh, I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm assuming that is intentional. Uh, but anyway, somebody went missing like 33 yeah. years ago, and then now, I guess somebody's going missing again. You know, and yeah. they. It, it kind of goes from there. So it's like, again, like a, like Twin Peaks and, and uh, Stranger Things where it's like something happens in a small town and actually there's a, uh, a nuclear power plant that almost seems like the, the ominous evil <laughs> place a little bit, you know, that's supposed to be like shutting down and everything. So I'm really interested to see where this goes and how this differentiates from those films and how close it is to them because people are love to just say like, Oh, stranger things or twin peaks, you know, yeah. or if it is very much just kind of built on the backs of those. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, again, like I didn't really have much to watch this week. Um, I'm also like really big into college football. So I did watch all the games yesterday, but just a real quick story about me. When I watched the, uh, movie we're about to talk about, which is what, uh, rare exports, rare exports, uh, my TV, like most people's TV has the option to split. So I split between the movie. Split screen. Yeah, split screen. Sorry. I had the split screen to the movie <laughs> and some of the football games. But on my TV, it's like a cheaper TV I got from Walmart. It's like a 50 inch, you know, HD TV, but it's kind of cheap. So you could split it, but it had both audios playing at the same time. So it's kind of like the devil's symphony. You know, it's like, hey, like figure out how to get the audio to turn off for the football game so I could hear the movie. So that was kind of interesting. So did you figure it out? Did it actually Yeah, you, can act, okay. you had to go through, though, on mine and go to the actual. Uh, HD input, yeah, and then mute that, and then it's it's fine. Mm. So I had both, play, which I don't know if it's just like because it's a cheaper TV or what, but we, we had to figure it out because I couldn't handle it too much longer. It's like I can't listen to both of these things. Yep. So I guess now I can move into our discussion of Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale, and we'll start without doing any spoilers to the storyline. Just giving general thoughts on the movie, and then get into the, whether we recommend it or not. And then go into a spoiler discussion. So like I said, this was one that's on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it. So you can go check it out. And it's not that long either, I think. Um, it was an hour and 24 the, minutes. Yeah, the runtime is an hour and 24 minutes. So it's less than an hour and a half. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. But yeah, so we can start off our discussion of it now, and then we'll we'll declare when we're going into spoilers. So <laughs> we will do. De- I declare. We, yeah, we spoilers declare again. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers <laughs> later. Um, so, th- you know, when you think of Christmas horror films, so you have ones. So, you, so there's like an era where there were there were ones like Black Christmas and like uh, was it Silent Night, Deadly Night? And there's different ones. And like a lot of those when they came out got trashed by critics because they're like, how dare they soil this? Because um, nothing this, bad happened this, 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 this great holiday with you know blood and guts and gore and nudity and blah blah blah. So you had like a lot of those movies getting trashed when they came out, and then you kind of didn't see any for a while, and then you had the kind of jokey ones like Jack Frost, mm, where there's like the bad. snowman, and then like doesn't he rape somebody in it? Yeah, he yeah he. So it's yeah. like terrible and bad and not even really funny. And, and then what's funny carry. was it came around the same time. So the Jack Frost horror film about a snowman came out around the same time the as the Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton Jack Frost yeah. family film. So I was wondering so how, I wonder rented them. how many people went to rent this feel good um, uh, holiday Christmas movie with Michael Keaton in it for their kids. 
and well, he then, dies in it. So. And, well, yeah. Spoilers. It's actually, it's, oh God. <laughs> well, he dies and comes back as the snowman. I, I think we have a discussion about the Jack Frost because I watched it last year. Just real quick, the, the way that they, the spoiler, it doesn't matter. Uh, they use antifreeze, and like there's an entire scene where like they're fighting the snowman and antifreeze. That would kill you in real life. Like if you were in antifreeze oh, that they, like, long, covered in it as yeah, well? that would make you so sick if you were like in antifreeze for like five minutes because it's going to get into your skin. So you die too, probably. You did. Yeah, but, that just bothered me. I watch that movie. It's like, so, no. um, so you have movies like that, like the kind of kitschy. You got Gremlins, and, and then like yeah, there's uh, the was it? Well, you had like Gremlins <laughs> and. Um, but then there's like so like Ginger Dead Man, the one that's like Gary Busey's the voice of a gingerbread man. There's like kind of junk like that. Crazy gin- or crazy Gary Busey? Like or, later later career. So like, yeah, where he has on TV show and he would like break down like distinguish and have a word, you know. I don't remember exactly when it came out, but it was during the era when he was no longer in huge box office. Yeah, so crazy Busey. Did you Busey go to Days of the Dead, Derek? I can't remember this year. Was that the one in Jefferson Mall? No, no, no. no. Where no. Gary, Gary Busey was there at this one this no. year. No. But I'd, I've yeah. heard stories uh, about him. Yeah. Did you ride him for the football game? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Office. Yeah. My friend uh, Nick Wood apparently was chasing him around. My friend Nick there, he was drunk and was following <laughs> him around and antagonizing and antagonizing him. him. Like, hey, dude, let me get a picture. Let me get a picture. And apparently Gary turned around and just said, just go to the damn table. <laughs> 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 well, then uh, it was funny, though, because we were, I think we were like in one of the rooms. Yeah. And um, you were like, doing the panel, right? Or like it was, I think it was after it was either before or after that, because I was standing there with like Julie mm. and then Gary walked through and saw Julie. I was like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and then um, Nick or yeah, Nick and Corey were there and and then Nick went to say something, and Gary's like, oh, and like walked <laughs> off. So it went from him immediately trying to go to like smooth mode to talk to Julie to then uh, Nick pissing him off. And then it reminded me, um, I know like we always make arrested development references. He was like Buster Bluth, like with his mom, instead of, instead of being like, mother, he was like yelling for his assistant. He's like, assistant, get the security, get him out of here. But, um, <laughs> But uh, we need to get Gary Busey. But yeah, like so Gary you Busey. had so going back to the discussion. So you had movies like Gremlins, and you had like you classy know, pictures like Gremlins. You had like Gremlins. <laughs> well, I think you had so you had movies like Gremlins and mm-hmm. Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. You had all these genre movies that were set on Christmas or around really Christmas, yeah. on or around Christmas that weren't about Christmas. Mm-hmm. And because Gremlins, even though it takes place during Christmas, it's really not about. It's just about a Christmas gift. Yeah, you know, where's a, a yeah, Santa hat? Yeah, and it's about you know, so the, it's just like the backdrop mm-hmm. for stuff. And it's not really about the holiday or the lore of the holiday. Is, or, I think we can trace back to the war on Christmas back into like late seventies, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so Rare Exports is one of the movies that actually is about the Christmas traditions yeah. and about Christmas lore. And it treats things seriously. And you've had more, you know, like it treats things seriously, but in a tongue in cheek matter, yeah. you know, it is a, it is a comedy on, on many levels. Well, and, and like, but it's I, not like jokey. Well, and too, like when I said that it treats it seriously, I mean, it's not like Jack Frost or, yeah. or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's more of like, here's this, um, I think like a more comparable, um, movie we have reviewed on the podcast previously was Krampus and mm-hmm. that you take kind of a Christmas legend or lore and you make a movie around it with some comedic elements because some of this stuff is so over the top, and, you know, especially um, like the way the movies kind of resolve and stuff like that. So yeah. you have all these kind of over the top elements, yeah. but it's still about like a specific take on the lore and about the but, holiday, which is like the thing I loved about it just because it it brought something new to it and like it has its own story to tell. You know, it's not yeah. just. Santa dressed up as a killer going around killing kids. Do you know what I mean? Like it's at least try to do something creative with the holiday season. <laughs> Here's um, a gift, Timmy, and it's like a grenade in a box. <laughs> and I guess it was a short in like 2003 too okay. with the same cast. They made, uh, you know, well, different kids. Red, yeah, not the, yeah, well, the, yeah. the kids are but, but the guy, the, children. The, the, the older, older guys. <laughs> yeah, he was just a little man swimming on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> You're like 30 now. Nah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, the first time I'd watched it was for the review last time, just because like, like I guess, I guess a couple years ago, I mean, because it did get like really good reviews. There was a lot of buzz around. It came out yeah. in what, 2010. Yeah. But I just never saw it. Um, I think I probably rented it from Wild and Wooly actually when I, when I watched it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I like the film a lot. I mean, it's, yeah, it gets pretty goofy, but it builds to that intentionally. 
Um, and it kind of starts off just basically setting up the ground rules of like, oh, you know, everybody thinks Santa Claus is this ideal version of Santa <laughs> that we all think, but no, truly there's like this, this is darker, um, this darker version of him that well, is like the real Santa. A lot of the legend and lore about Santa isn't all, you know, hunky dory. Yeah. Uh, jolly fat guy comes in your house and gives you a PlayStation four or whatever, <laughs> uh, which like side note, when I was a that's kid, the American version of when I was a kid, I got taken out of Santa pretty young because I'm like, wait a minute. Why, how can the elves make Nintendos? Like, did they have the rights to that? Like, have they sub license out? Yeah, way made a terrible childhood. I was like, Nintendo's a Japanese <laughs> yeah. company, so I don't think the elves they ruined can... it for itself yeah. and everybody in the household. <laughs> no, because I'm like, all the cartoons were them making like little wooden airplanes and dolls and teddy bears. And no, like, they well, in the it? sweatshops. It doesn't show them with like advanced microprocessor creators. So how are they making all these? I'm going to Tossie Station to get power converters. That's what they're doing, William. So just like the so rare exports like the and the thing too is the movie starts out in like english like there's a lot of english at the beginning and then you go into the the subtitles and things like that wait a minute was this like the thing where they they i know this is a oh. finnish film but they just made up their own language and put you know translations on it i mean that, that, the was. title of whatever they called santa i guess is based on finnish legend like i know yeah. they've said like <laughs> oh it's it's from the country where Santa originated or something like that. I yeah. you know, I need to, I should have looked up more of that before we watched, Saint but Nicolai. I think some of this is based oh, yeah, on totally. their, uh, you know, their own legends as yeah. well. well. Obviously there's probably some things that have taken liberties well, have been taken with the, the movie. I want to see, I know there's a video about this too or something, but there's a meme where it's like Tim Allen's character from the, whatever movie it is. We Santa Santa. Claus. There's just a meme somebody drew where like it shows him killing Santa and he's like, this is what we do every year. And then like the next scene is him into Santa. He's like, shoot me, kill me now. And the kid's like, ah. it's like, that's the movie I want to see. We're like, Somebody kills Santa and they become like the gatekeeper almost or whatever you want to call yeah, it. I was thinking about the movie the other day. That's a twisted, that's kind of a twisted Disney movie. Like yeah. it's the whole, you know, the whole, yeah, to, to become the boss, you have to kill the boss. Yeah, to be like, yeah. man, you yeah. gotta beat well, And it's almost like, so imagine, so here's a movie I want to see. I want to see a, um, a reboot or a remake of the Santa Claus directed by David Cronenberg. So you have mm. like Santa Claus body horror. Yes. Because you have good. just just imagine like if you have like a super vain, like really in shape guy who accidentally kills Santa and then no matter what he does, he keeps like gaining weight. Wait a minute, did did, did Tim Allen kill Santa in that movie? I yeah, can't remember. He knocked him off the roof. Oh, okay. And so he killed him. Yeah. And then he, he, I don't remember. Did he put on the jacket, or did he find a note that says "put on the jacket"? Well, I think he actually he on. accidentally killed him, and then he started like gaining weight and growing facial hair. Yeah, and then he put then on like the Mrs. Claus he, comes he in, hit kills the body his wife. in the landfill. <laughs> I was like watching the news feverishly, making sure nobody could find yeah. the body. I was like, nobody find nobody, nobody, nobody. <laughs> But uh, then elves come to his house because he killed Santa, and yeah. it's Home Alone with Tim Allen versus the elves. <laughs> but like that's easily a horror film. That is easily a horror yeah. film. But but going back to then we go home, we go to the old trope where like Miss Claus or the elves come to the house and they chase him, and then they do the stupid mouth thing where she swallows something. So like and imagine if Santa. like Mrs. Claus comes in, she's like, "Well, whoever Santa Claus is married to me." Yeah, and, it's like, <laughs> and he's like, "No." <laughs> but like, but like, what if that was the twist? Is that like the character, the male character was gay, and then it's Santa, like Mrs. Claus, and then like you could make that into a straight on horror film. Um, so maybe we should do that. Or you could have it kind of like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where like they cut Santa's face off and they sew it to his face, <laughs> and then like and goes, they no. strap him down the chair and make him eat a bunch of food. So whenever he, he whenever he comes to the chimney, if some little kid sees him, he has like the Santa Claus face that's like over his. And he's like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rob Zombie's like, he's like, Dude. yeah, I like that Rob better. Zombie's or he, Christmas yeah, tale. He just staples his yeah. face onto his face, and yeah, well, see, we could we got some good ideas, for but uh, but rare exports. So the, the I think we're described a better movie than the one we watched. Well, he, so so with rare exports, like some. Something else that's always fun to see is a Christmas movie where it's set in a location where there's a bunch of snow and mm -hmm. it actually looks like snow versus like in the U.S., like depending on where you're listening to this from, like in the U.S., like the part that we're in and Kentucky. Most places they film films, they do not well, have well, well, Lethal Weapon, our next film, is... Well, it's in Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles, yeah. but no snow. Yeah, you know? well, you don't yeah. get... Yeah, yeah. Less of, now, maybe when global warming destroys everything, there will be yeah. snow there eventually. Well, how right could now. you get snow because of global warming? But then um, <laughs> the... <laughs> but like seeing a movie where it's set in like a location that has snow and, and all that, like... 
because I forget what day I watched it, but whatever day I watched it, it was a little bit colder. So I was like, oh, this is fitting mm-hmm. that I have blankets on watching this. But you have I mean, like it has the same feel of the thing, kind of like this thing being dug up. You yeah. know, they're in this isolated location, this small town, and there's like a mystery behind it. You really don't know what's going to be happening. Yeah. And then, you know, your your lead is a is mostly for the most of the film is a kid mm-hmm. who's the one that drives all the action. And you have the adults, but the um the kid is Go ahead and try uh, to pronounce his name. I haven't looked it up, but I'm just saying Uh Are there any vowels in his Pietari? name? Pietari? Pietari? Oh, okay, yeah. The, well, that's Peter okay. Jackson. Yeah. What, what's his real name? That's what I was thought you were going to oh, say. Oh, uh, Oni Tamila? Hmm. Well, he did a great uh, job, I think. Yeah, but... I, I think all the acting in this is pretty good, especially the male leads. Like they, I think they do a really good job of playing it straight. And also being humorous, you well, know. So, um, talking about parallels to the thing, all of the leads is—is uh, is there a single female character in the movie? <laughs> all the leads is men. I don't think so. Men. Because don't think so. Uh, because the main kid and his dad, like um, the kid's mother and like the dad and his wife, they she had passed away. Yeah. And the other characters, it's just like father and son, and then just like some other guys. I so wonder. If, I wonder if that's intentional. It could have been. It does not pass the Bechdel test. Mm, no. <laughs> but I just realized that, that, you know, the other parallel is it's all male characters. And Santa, you know, and, and all that Santa? stuff. Santa is a male character. And I don't really think there was any, like, gender points to be made there. I think it was mostly just how the story worked out. Yeah. And, like, you know, you have, like, the kid and, the like, the kid and his friend. And, like, so you have, like, the kid dealing with what he thinks that's going on and the parents or the his dad dealing with it you know he thinks is going on but and and something too that this movie did because a lot of times it drives me absolutely insane in movies when there's all these things going on it's 100 obvious that like hey this isn't just uh what you think it is like at least the <laughs> the the adults in this one are like oh this is weird mm-hmm. this isn't yeah, what you right thought away, it was like something like once they're giving somewhat proof, you know what I mean? It's not just a kid talking. They they don't then yeah. say, mm, I see this thing flying. Yeah. I see this monster. I see this zombie, this mm-hmm. vampire, but I really don't think that's what it is. And this one, the parents or, you know, the dad is kind of just goes along. And, you know, of course, the kid comes from the perspective of like, oh, like, here's the legend and this is what's happening. And I'm afraid of Santa and all this type of stuff like Santa? that. And. So, of course, he's coming from that angle and the dad, you know, wouldn't necessarily buy into that. But once they do see things, then the adult characters are kind of on board. So he's not the parents from Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah. So the guy that we burned alive, like, <laughs> but you wouldn't remember his name. Now you're talking about him and you've seen him and he does nothing, these things. Nothing, nothing. Um, eh, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Or in Freddy's at the party and he's like bullying everybody in the pool. And like, hey, this is normal. This happens. Uh, well, the pool got turned on, and... The pool's a hot tub, and there's but, somebody with the... <laughs> so, the thing I love about this also is just because... I, mean, I like films that are set in different places, like, that give, give me a different experience. Granted, I love experiences that are familiar to me, you know what I mean? Like, that that do feel like the traditional American experience. You know, watching films like Home Alone or, you know, A Christmas Story, Christmas Vacation. But I think, like, part of the appeal for me is that... It's in this totally different region. It is based on, I guess, some of their lore with obviously a big spin on it. Um, and just kind of, I don't know, it just, you feel like you're exposed to a different perspective. You, you know, you are with any story, really, from a good storyteller. But uh, but it, it feels like a fresh Christmas horror film. Like, again, it's not just well, I think, Santa killing people or I think something like something that. Something, too, is like when you get to watch films that aren't American, you get a completely different experience. Yeah, because... Yeah. Like when you have an American, which there's nothing wrong with American mm-hmm. films as we grew up with, but they they try even if they don't purposely do it. They it's still kind of the same experience oh, yes, because it's yeah. still the like you said. There's that familiarity. They're well, like, okay, we're gonna do this, 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 and this, and we go to a different culture. It's a little bit different. Well, yeah. Like so, in this movie, so rare exports. Like I guess you could argue it to some extent, but like most, you know, of your standard Hollywood films have a very clearly defined first, second, and third act. Yeah, and this movie feels more of like. There's like a first act and then it kind of goes into the third, like it kind of. Yeah, I mean, I like the way it, the plot evolves, too, because they, <laughs> they keep mystery, you know, they keep some mystery behind it. Yeah. And like you're not just given like some information, like it's almost like you're slowly getting revealed a lot of things along with the characters. And I think that's what keeps it interesting, even though maybe there aren't like 
there isn't an end of first act break where it's like, okay, this is the, this is our goal. And this is what we're going to be pushing towards. There's other things going on that I think keep your attention. Yeah. There's not as much of like a call to action mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and all those types of things. It's more of things just kind of evolve and happen. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of goes into gear and you know, like the, we talked about like it being set in a different area and a different culture. Like those are elements that are interesting about it. And it is interesting watching movies or shows that are set kind of in the kind of European snowy locations. Um, I think it's a beautiful film and I love the landscapes, the settings. Like I think, I don't know. It's just a great looking film. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically everything about Mm -hmm. it is good. Locations. The the effects in it are are good and interesting. I will say that there was some CGI Mm -hmm. that occurred. That was pretty noticeable. But that was also so, seven years ago. Yeah, it was, you know. two, it was 2010. Um, and it's one of those things where some of the, the times they use CG on the movie. Um, so comparing it without explaining what was it, it is. Was it better or worse than Mortal Kombat? Well, no, what I was going to say was, so if you compare a movie like The Thing to this movie. Um, so in both movies, I don't think it's a spoiler to say there's like a helicopter. And oh, it's most definitely a spoiler. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I'm not gonna watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> a helicopter appears. Uh, nope, in not both watching movies. it. I'm out. And in the thing, it was like a practical model. They had like say so real footage of a real helicopter flying, and they also had a model. And they had the model <laughs> like being in like the I guess like the sound stage. And then this movie had one, they had a real one and they had CG. So what looks more fake? The thing and the model, or this movie and the CG. I I don't. I think I'd have to watch them side by side. Yeah. But for me, the CG in this, I think it worked okay because it was almost like a build up. It's not like you're watching a scene where between two people and then suddenly a CGI monster's like in their face. Yeah, it is. They tried to blend it, but also the CGI has like a video game look to it. Yeah, it almost looks like you're watching a scene out of a video game at times. Yeah, yeah. which is almost fine because it's almost like it all blends together. And I think maybe it's because it doesn't stand out. Like again, it's not like a person face to face with something that looks fake. It's almost like if you're seeing a CGI shot, a lot of times. It's composite in a way where it blends okay with some real stuff, but then yeah. again, sometimes it's just a single shot and maybe the whole scene is CG, and so it kind of works, I think. I don't know. I think they they blended the CG into this film really well, and I understand they totally had to do it unless their budget would have been like astronomically higher, you know, like yeah, crazy I mean, amounts high, and I think it was worth, worth it to use it for this film. I mean, and I can't really fault people for using CG in projects because like even in the stuff we've done, We've done some after effects and like muzzle flash and stuff just because that's so much easier and safer <laughs> than using an actual like blunt Next gun. time we'll just get some bulletproof vests and, and just hope for the yeah. best. And yeah. like in one of the shorts, like <laughs> I made a, yeah. <laughs> in a, one of the shorts, we made like a character's eyes glow just because practically making some type of it wasn't to do work. that was going to be so hard. And we tried a practical solution that didn't really work. Um, so there are times when like digital effects are easier and things like that. Um, See, Jerry Leto would have just let people implant flashlights in the backs of his <laughs> eyes, you know. <laughs> and then he would have left a used condom as in thanks his in their uh, yeah. mailbox. He's but, the worst. But, um, yeah, so, so <laughs> I guess he like, was in the new remake of the Santa Claus I and was leaving it. little presents in all the uh, stockings of cast members. <laughs> yeah, I, he, he's like that. I don't know, man. He just seems like the worst. So. Side note, not literally so, the worst. So, if we were to do a, a remake of the Santa Claus, where it's a body horror film, and Jared Leto is the lead who becomes Santa Claus, he would probably literally gain like two hundred pounds mm-hmm. just to do eh, the role. I don't role. think he would. I think but, he's. Uh, I think he's, uh, he would draw the line. Now, Christian Bell would do. No, it. yeah, let's cast Christian. Yeah, because he'll actually gain the weight and then he'll go lose it. So, if you're going to gain somebody, yeah, he'll but do it's it. a, also a sequel to American Psycho. Yeah, <laughs> he's Which alive. Would be per- yeah, where he's alive and yeah, he's like very vain. You yeah, know? yeah, because so, he's also a sociopath <laughs> yeah. too. So it'd work out. Yeah. So like the second he starts gaining weight, he's like at the gym making it go away. <laughs> Wait, can we movie. get Reith Witherspoon to be in it again? Reith, yeah, whatever her name <laughs> That's is. That's what her name Reith. is during December. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, Reese Witherspoon. But no, we're gonna call her Reese Reith Wither- Witherspoon. <laughs> is sitting on the doorknob, yeah. or the just the. All door. right, so do we just want to kind of go into spoilers now? I mean, like yeah, I, so I, guess, I like this film quite a bit. Like I, I really enjoy this film. So, I appreciate that it exists, and 
uh, it's something I recommend people checking out for sure if you're looking for a Christmas horror film. So you give it a solid recommend. What would you give out of 10? Uh, maybe like close to an, maybe an eight, you know? All right. uh, so Derek. Seven. So uh, I think I probably fall around the same range between like a seven and an eight, like yeah. seven and a half. Like definitely a recommend for if you want to see a Christmas horror film that is not just you know, some slasher dude in a Santa <laughs> costume, or if you want to see something that dives into the mythos from a different culture, things like that. Um, it's on Amazon prime. If you have that. And if not, I don't think it's too much to rent and other from other services or to purchase. Uh, it's not a super long watch. Uh, and it's not a gore fest. It's not really trying to be scary either it's more of just an exploration of like a different culture and myth and things so on those elements alone i think it's worth checking out if you haven't seen it before and also too yeah if you haven't seen it drop out now because if you're spoiled on it that's going to take out like 50 percent of the fun of this film because it is kind of the reveals as it goes through and the mythos i think is is the cool thing about it and that's yeah. the fun <clears throat> The fun part of watching the this mythos movie. is full yeah. of life. So, so this is time for spoilers. Get the hell out. Merry Christmas. <laughs> get out. Get out. So now it's time for spoilers. So um, in the movie, so I think the the interesting kind of twist is so they have the wolf trap because they think that it's wolves. I think it's wolves that killed all of the the reindeer. Um, and then they go. to I the like pit. how they layer all that stuff. You know, it's like they start out like talking about. First of all, the people that can the site excavation site or whatever, he's like, here's your new workplace list. And it's like (laughs) no smoking, no cussing. It's all these (laughs) things to be good. And then it rolls into the reindeer being dead and all that. Like, I love how it just continues to build. And it just and then the main kid thinks that he's responsible for everything or him and his friend are because they snuck and watched it. Yeah. So they think that would be even bad that they made all this (laughs) stuff happen. And. So then they think that they're responsible for the deers being killed. And then his friend's like, don't tell anybody. And his friend's being really naughty. <laughs> and then like when his friend goes missing and stuff like that, but then they catch, uh, they have the pit with like the stakes in it and they find like the old straggling man and then they take him inside because they think he's dead, but he's really alive. And you're like, oh, they caught Santa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real story real quick. Remember that one time our parents tried to catch a gorilla that escaped from Mizzou like a couple of states over and they made a mud pit and they caught their uncle in it. So to, so to be like clear, that. our parents did not do that as adults. It was a story that my mom... <laughs> no, wait, 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 what? So my mom told us a story about when they were younger, there was a story about a gorilla, gorilla escaping from the Cincinnati Zoo. It was like in and for 70s. some reason, they were sure that it was going to come directly to their house in Louisville, Kentucky, like 100 miles away. So they built a trap to catch the gorilla if they it dug, came through they the yard. They dug out a mud... They dug out a big hole, like a big dirt hole, and then filled it with water, and then they managed to catch their uncle in it. <laughs> that so. that sounds like a cover-up for something else. They got a body in there? <laughs> I don't know. It was the same guy. Like, everything that they could do to that guy, like, they caught him in the mud trap, they spilt tea on him, They everything they ever did. That's, like two, different, did. D- that's two different, drastically different things. Spilling yeah. tea and catching somebody in a mud trap? Yeah, I was saying, but like, everything you could do to that guy, but he was like the guy that got stuck in here. That just they, reminds me they of that. Said they did that guy, did he pass away? No, he's still alive. Okay. Yeah. But um, so then <laughs> when uh, they catch the, they, what they think is Santa and they kind of have him like in the workshop and they tie him up and stuff. That's kind of when I was really on board with this film when I first watched it. I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Is it going to be a torture porn yeah. film where they torture Santa? <laughs> yeah. Well, Santa? and two, and then the reveal afterwards. That it's what not else Santa. Happened, yeah. That it's not Santa. That's not like, oh, I, I really like this. I yes. like it the way and they, the creepy stall, the uh, straw children that they replaced too. It's yeah. awesome. Well, like a movie where they like, if they were going to torture Santa, like, what, what would you do if you tied him up? Like, what would you start breaking ornaments? Like, what no, would you do? You would to- get a, uh, you would shove a candy cane up his nostrils. <laughs> All that <laughs> yeah, I know. Else. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> it's like, do you like it, Santa? <laughs> yeah. Again, or just like take uh, take the 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 glass ball Christmas ornament and, and just head with throw it, it in his face. <laughs> Just but, evil dead uh, it and just keep smashing him in the face with uh, snow globes. So you have like um, the escalation of like the beginning when they're doing like the excavate the excavation and stuff like that, and then you have like the kind of mythos spread in about like here's the things not to do, and then the kids see it and think they're responsible. Then when bad things happen, they catch what they think is Santa that's really an elf. And first, like his Which, dad, that's what everybody would think. It's and, Santa. And, well, and the know? dad at first is like, oh, it was like a homeless guy or mm-hmm. somebody from the American camp. 
and then when they find out he's homeless in America well no it's because there was the Americans oh, who were running okay. that camp and then when it, they thought that maybe it was one of them who had escaped and like wandered onto their property <laughs> and then that's why they go and get the one guy who can speak English to translate then they realize that he is not an American from that um, facility that he is uh, at the time they think Santa because like you know the kid comes in and tells them the kind of mythos and what's happening about how all the kids are missing and things like that so then they want to sell it for was it eighty five thousand dollars? Yeah, eighty three or eighty something like <laughs> whatever it was. It's like eighty five thousand dollars plus like the uh, tax. Yeah. <laughs> they want to go sell it to the Americans because like whenever all the reindeer carcasses were there, like well, how much is it worth? And one guy's like eighty five thousand yeah. dollars. He <laughs> just wants the fair shake. He wants he wants what he's worth, what he's owed, basically. <laughs> and then uh, they take it to the American camp, and then like the American guy tells them he's like. Uh, put down your weapons and and back away and don't do anything because that's not Santa. That's an elf. Yeah. And then you see all the other elves that come in or all the other elves that come in and it just turns into kind of like Night of Living Dead where they're in there kind of worrying about being taken <laughs> over by all the elves that are basically almost like zombies. <laughs> And, and then, of course, like the American scientist guy gets killed and all of his people get killed. It was the guy from Jaws. Um, no, because they, oh, they're being bad and they have guns and stuff. <laughs> guns. So then they go into the building and see the big unthawed out ball of Santa where he's <laughs> which we, in it. Which we never get to see him in the film. We really. never see Santa. We see the horns of it. So it almost looks like it could be kind of like a creature like Krampus. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah it reminds me yeah. more of Krampus. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. And I think they're just going for like scary um, imagery because I think not showing him was probably more effective because whatever was going to be in yeah. there would not he, be He was going to have to be CGI also. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it was so big. Well, that's one thing I like when movies have the... Uh, the, the ball is enough to like actually do that because a lot of times like they'll try to like oh, we're not going to show it and then eventually they'll show it yeah. I kind of like that being not in the know like because you said a lot of times what you make in your mind or what yeah. you think you see is usually scarier than what you actually get to see and we have the threat of all the creepy naked elves that are like running yeah. throughout the land too so that's yeah. enough to yeah. give yeah they and should then, have done though like leg in the cornfield and they didn't <laughs> Well, like, too, having, like, the big horns and stuff, just, like, you know, they... Which they cut off to take for bounty as yeah. well. <laughs> just, it gives you certain imagery, but then um, the, the the main kid, Pieter, or however you pronounce his name, uh, came with the idea that since they, they find all the children in there in sacks that were, I guess, going to be sacrificed to Santa, so his idea is for the helicopter to come over and for them to attach a big net uh, to the helicopter so that they can fly the sack with all the kids away to, to drive all the elves after them. So, so that they the, can blow up Santa. So that the parents can then use all the materials they have there to blow up Santa and end it all. I like that the elves too have been collecting all the space heaters and hair dryers around, yeah. Yeah. around the community <laughs> <laughs> to defrost Santa. And, uh, well, it's like kind of a preposterous yeah. thing. It's like, <laughs> hair dryers. So, like, they, had no, the, and they take a dig at Russia too because yeah. he's like, why would they steal this old piece of crap? And he's like, well, in Russia, this is hair dryer is modern tech, not like the most modern technology. <laughs> in Russia, hair, what is it, hair dryers you... So you have all that kind of goofy element, and, that, and they remind like earlier in the movie there was like something with their like a stove, I think, outside or something. That was just kind of like uh, I guess shadowing what happened yeah. later or foreshadowing. And so you, you in the room they have all those machines on that are using they're using to dethaw Santa, <laughs> <laughs> and then the the adults are having to like unplug all of them and throw them over to help block the doors. Which a lot of those things though they would burn the hell out of your hands if you touch oh, them. Oh yeah, they're they get really them. Hot. Yeah, those yeah. ones that are really hot. Like even if they're um, kicking them, I'm like. You know, Your after kicking enough fire. of those, yeah. well, because like another one thing is, you know, like people think about like if it's glowing that if a lot of those yeah. heaters that glow, like they're like four or five hundred degrees. I mean, you think about when you're like trying to start a motorcycle that's already hot, and you yeah. burn your leg on the side of it if yeah. you just like barely kick past it. But at this point, uh, Petrie or whatever the main kid, he's basically playing the kid of a typical kid. He's not doing anything that's out of the ordinary. But like that's the turning point when he can't get everybody's attention, and he fires the gun yeah. like an action hero, and yeah. he's like, "Listen up!" and like that. <laughs> That's his change right there. He's like, uh, I'm going to cowboy this yeah. uh, situation. <laughs> I'm going to American he, like, John Wayne. He pulls this. off the dynamite, you know, the, 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 uh, what is it? Like the sheet off the dynamite. Yeah. Like he knew it was there somehow. <laughs> and then they, they formulate the plan and then, and then he rides on the sack with all the other kids on the helicopter. And that's where all the CG comes yeah. in. 
and which is so ridiculous at that point it's totally fine like you're on yeah. board with the story now it's the last act it's not you have so if you're still hanging on now watching the film it's not going to lose you there and then they fly away and it draws all of the elves after him and they're going to put him in the reindeer pen <laughs> um so that was interesting and then like the the kid like once he realizes that someone needs to close the gate to keep them all in so he goes down and like it's a moment of self-sacrifice. He jumps and, like, off like Ellen Ripley at the end of Alien 3 yeah. with his arms out. <laughs> and then he tells him, like, tell my dad what I did. <laughs> and then he gets the be- thing locked up. Because, too, I think his character at that point, he was supposed to be like, you know, like a young kid that yeah. basically, I don't know. I think he wanted to like prove himself of being worthy or something. You know, he had just get, been given a gun earlier in that. And yeah. the other kid kind of taunted him for being very childlike and stuff. So I think this is him like coming of age, basically. Um, you, you could see a sequel to this happening 20 years later <laughs> where he is like a John McClane badass hunting Santa or something, you know? <laughs> Santa hunter. This is just the origin story of him. This is actually yeah. his tale. But then uh, then you have, um, like, then his dad and, and the other adults are able to detonate and blow up Santa so that just as the elves are about to rush him, they all, mm-hmm. like... Oh, Santa's dad. Yeah. And then they, they like all, deactivate. And then, and then the it's real, like a half man. Mm-hmm. So then the comedic element comes in of where the adults, they're like, Oh, we have all these elves. What can we do with them? He's like, Oh, they're worth 85,000 a piece. Yeah. <laughs> so then they like have like a training station where they show them all how to be Santa's <laughs> and then they box them all up. So they train them all about how I guess to be like mall Santa. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. That's that's as much as they're doing. They're not like, I don't think they're going to be delivering presents. They're just showing them hand their present to the child and like cradle the face. child. <laughs> so you have those base. So the elements, they show them how to do that. And then they put them in the boxes. They're like rare exports and then ship them off for, I guess, like 85,000 plus tax for yeah. each of them. And so that's where the kind of like more dark humor element mm-hmm. comes in. And more Basically of the they CG. have slaves now. They're, well, they're. And, they're doing illegal slave trades. Yeah. And then the CG at the end is very reminiscent of Raiders of the Lost Ark and like the, the warehouse full of all the artifacts. Mm, yeah. Top men. And it's just the CG there is also kind of noticeable. But like in the service of like a was, big joke. Was it James was Woods in this at all? No. no. Oh, okay. Because, you know, in Family Guy, they did the same thing with James Woods. So. But uh, yeah, so the, the end of it is kind of the dark humor aspect that was only there a little bit through the rest of the movie, but like really hit on at the end. The rest of it was like absurdist humor, basically. Yeah. Um, which kind of, it, it starts off with being absurdist a little bit when the guy giving the backstory um, in the office talking. Yeah. Like that, that kind of gets you in the right mindset of like, okay, this is what this is. But then it plays it straight for a little while. Yeah. And it's more like, oh, you don't know if things are going to be really dire or what. But then, like, kind of after they realize that, I guess after they take that Santa to trade him in for money, that's when it turns, like, really absurdist yeah. and, and <laughs> like, pretty funny. Um, yeah, so the movie ends up a little bit different than it begins because um, you don't really know what direction it's going to go in. And, and that's just refreshing in that it's a different story and yeah. you don't see an evil Santa stomping around and slashing people's throats. <laughs> There's really not much in the way of like blood and gore throughout the movie. Um, there's tension without there really being horror or scary elements. I mean, I was thinking too, like aside from all the elf dong towards the end, like <laughs> you could pretty much show. That, I mean, there's like, I know there's like a cut open pig, you know, but like you could pretty much show this to a younger kid, maybe aside from a few elements easily, yeah. you know, which is something I'd, you know, we were watching this and I think I'd watch some other Christmas horror film. I can't remember what it was. But I had, was talking to my wife about our daughter and I was like, I was like, maybe we should just only show her Christmas <laughs> horror films her whole life. So she thinks that's what Christmas is about. So anytime she goes out and sees decorations or Santa, Santa she's no, like horrified. No. Yeah. But then you run the risk of like, you go to the mall and there's a Santa. She grabs the nearest yeah. like sharp implement and go and like slit Santa's throat. <laughs> and there's a it's fight. Like you could really warp somebody's mind just with media. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, media is or, powerful. You have to know how to wield it. I've seen the memes before. Like people share, like I want to show my kid Harry Potter and say it's a real life series and then send them a letter when they're a certain age (laughs) and then take them to the train station and watch them just run into the wall. It's like, that's child abuse. That's child abuse. If you do that. And hopefully your kid be smart enough to 
you know, figure that out over the course of however many If years. most kids figure out Santa isn't real, they'll yeah. probably figure out Harry Potter so, isn't real. So, spoiler alert for real life for anyone listening to this podcast. Um, Harry Potter's fake. Santa was real until he got blown up in 2010 yep. at the yeah. end of Rare Exports. Yeah, so I think that'll wrap up our discussion of Rare Exports, a Christmas tale. Um, if you're listening to the podcast via iTunes, you can do a huge favor and leave a review because it helps other people find the podcast. You can find all the work we're doing at housepavillostore.com. There's links there to all of our social media accounts, so make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and everywhere else. And you can find us specifically, make sure you follow us on Instagram, on HBTVS underscore official, because sometimes there we'll post um, information about things we have upcoming, and... Well, we're, now if we're doing two podcasts at a time, we could actually post like, hey, we're doing this next week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we, we we're planning accordingly. And normally we figure out about three days before the podcast. Yeah, or, yeah. Some, or sometimes even less than <laughs> the, the day before. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then as long as things go well, based on the timing of all this, when you're hearing this, we'll be shooting a, a little sequence for a short that we should have out sometime this month. And maybe I'll we'll have some pictures from that when we do it. Um, but yes, yeah, so make sure to follow us on social media. And if you find us specifically on the internet, you can find me on Twitter at William Caps, which is my just full name now. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and pretty much everything at Meta World Derek. I'm at Blevin Sean, but if you want to go tweet at Sean Blevins and tell him to give up that account, you can do that too. <laughs> they probably won't respond though. I think they haven't used it in years. So let's just like start a boycott. Deactivation. To, yeah, deactivate that account so I can get it. All right, so that'll bring this episode of the House by Vegas or Podcast to a close. Thanks for listening.